speakers by Arthur O'Shaughnessy can be termed as an anthem for all artists everywhere, be they poets, writers, musicians, painters, sculptors or designers. The poem was published in 1874 under the title The Ode. Arthur O'Shaughnessy worked as a herpetologist in the zoological department of the British Museum. A herpetologist specializes in the study of reptiles and amphibians. However, his true passion was literature. His poems are marked by a haunting music on account of their context and form. The Ode is the first poem in his anthology which is called Music and Moonlight. It is a tribute to all artists who have the ability to live in a world of fantasy and build utopias of their own. They are often misunderstood as world losers and world forsakers, when in reality they are the actual movers and shakers of the world. The poem contains an allusion to the biblical cities of Nineveh and Babel. Nineveh was the ancient flourishing capital of the Assyrian Empire which was founded by Nimrod. A large number of slaves were tortured and worked to death to build this magnificent city. At the height of its glory, the city of Nineveh earned the reputation of being a city of sin, so much so that the prophet Jonah had refused to go and preach there even after being commanded to do so by God. The city was ultimately destroyed in 612 BCE and never rebuilt. Babel refers to the city of Babylon and the Tower of Babel. The citizens of Babel under the leadership of Nimrod decided to build a tower that would be so high that it would reach heaven. They did this because they wanted to prove their non-dependence on God and to proclaim their equality with him. So, God punished them by giving them different languages. Now, they all spoke in different tongues and were incomprehensible to each other. They could no longer communicate with each other and build the tower. The poem is originally divided into nine stanzas, but we are going to study only the first three stanzas in standard 12. So, for our purposes, the poem has three stanzas. The first stanza deals with who they are and what they do. They refers to the collective voice of the speakers in the poem. The second stanza deals with how they do it, which means how they do what they are supposed to do or what they choose to do. And the third stanza deals with how they work with the cycle of creation, which involves creation, decay, death and rebirth. Now let us read the poem slowly and understand the meaning. We are the music makers and we are the dreamers of dreams, wandering by lone sea breakers and sitting by desolate streams. The poem begins in the collective voice, we, of all artists everywhere. Here the poet has not referred to any specific category of art, but to all art be it writing, poetry, painting, sculpture, music, dance or something else. In fact, we may easily conclude that since art is all about aesthetics, innovation, creation, emotion and expression, even our everyday so-called mundane non-artistic tasks can become art, provided they are done with an artistic attitude. We are the music makers. The artists say that they are the ones who create or make music. But what is music? Music here does not refer only to musical notes, but to anything that, be, that brings pleasure into our lives by stirring up our deepest emotions and touching or awakening our soul and making us feel alive. Those who create this experience for us, either through music or otherwise, are the music makers. And we are the dreamers of dreams. Music and dreams make life worth living. Dreams here do not simply mean idleness or wishful thinking, 
but stand for vision, foresight, ambition and planning. So, we can easily conclude that it is the dreamers and music makers who envision the future and take the world forward. Wandering by lone sea breakers and sitting by desolate streams. However, these artists find it very difficult to adjust in society because their genius is often misunderstood and their work is not valued by the common people. Even when they live among people, they feel alone. So, they wander about by the lonely sea breakers where people do not normally go. Sea breakers are structures built on the seashore in order to protect the shore from erosion. Sometimes these artists spend their time sitting next to desolate streams. This affords them their much needed seclusion, solitude and inspiration, without which they would not be able to produce any art. If artists did not distance themselves from the society, they would possibly not be able to think out of the box. World losers and world forsakers, upon whom the pale moon gleams, yet we are the movers and shakers of the world forever it seems. Since they exist on the fringes of society, at many levels, common people call them the losers and forsakers of the world. To forsake means to abandon, to leave behind or to escape from. Only the pale moon that gleams upon them as it soothes, inspires and watches over them understands the trials and tribulations that they go through. Artists are highly sensitive people and they feel a special strong connection with the moon. When the rest of the world is indoors, the artists are the ones who bask in and admire the pleasing, gentle, cool beauty of the pale moon. The pale moon may not attract as much attention as the full bright moon. Only those with a keen eye and sharply attuned sensitivity can admire its beauty. Upon whom the pale moon gleams, this also refers to the fact that artists have to struggle very hard to earn a living. If they already have an inheritance or have found a patron, they can pursue their art freely. But most of the time, this is not the case. Artists have to generally struggle financially, which is depicted by the gleam, that is, the dull shine of the pale moon. Yet, we are the movers and shakers of the world forever, it seems. Yet, the artists in one collective voice say that in spite of their loneliness and financial struggles, it is they who are the movers and shakers of the world. This has always been the case and it will remain the same in the future too. They believe in themselves and in the value of their art. This is denoted by the words, it seems. They know that through their art, they can impact the world. With wonderful deathless ditties, we build up the world's great cities and out of a fabulous story, we fashion an empire's glory. Deathless ditties means immortal songs. By creating immortal songs, artists can build up the great cities of the world. How can a song build up a city? By envisioning, praising, inspiring or even criticizing. Do not underestimate the power of words and melody. They are extremely powerful. They provoke people into creating what is desirable and tearing down or remedying what is not. A song that praises a city and its people also immortalizes their greatness. The physical city may be destroyed in reality, but still the city will, will live on forever through the song. And out of a fabulous story, we fashion an empire's glory. So by creating and telling fabulous stories of a great empire, artists are able to give shape to or design its glory. We often judge or evaluate the greatness or magnificence of an empire on the basis of its artistic productivity and achievements. Art is insidious. It permeates our being like nothing else can. A fabulous story is the best propaganda or advertisement of the glory of an empire and 
the empire lives on in people's minds through this fabulous story even after its downfall and ruin. One man with a dream at pleasure shall go forth and conquer a crown and three with a new song's measure can trample an empire down. Through his writings, an artist can motivate a man to dream freely, to visualize the plethora of possibilities at his disposal and to courageously go forward to fulfill his dreams, that is, to conquer a crown. Conquering a crown involves overthrowing a king and assuming kingship. It is an arduous task, not for the faint-hearted, but an artist's writings can make the one who dreams of achieving this possible for him by boosting his morale. The crown here ref refers to an extraordinary achievement. To achieve something extraordinary, one needs tremendous courage and perseverance and the will to surmount all obstacles. And three with a new song's measure can trample an empire down. At the same time, another song can inspire people to come together and cause a revolution in order to bring about the downfall of an empire, that is, to crush it underfoot. Thus, art enables the achievement of goals as well as the implementation or execution of the much needed curative measures for the welfare of society. We in the ages lying in the buried past of the earth, built Nineveh with our sighing and Babel itself with our mirth. Artists have always been at work inspiring society and bringing about change even in the years gone by, that is the past ages the evidences of which are now buried in the earth. These evidences are of the biblical city of Nineveh and the Tower of Babel. The magnificent city of Nineveh, which is now lying in ruins, was built out of the sighing of artists at the torture that the slaves or artisans had to undergo in order to build the city. On the other hand, the Tower of Babel was built with the spirit of joy when the people of Babel decided to build a tower that would touch heaven, they began the task with unbridled enthusiasm. The stories of Nineveh and Babel have endured in the minds of the people, even though the cities themselves have been destroyed. And overthrew them with prophesying to the old of the new world's worth, for each age is a dream that is dying, or one that is coming to birth. After creating such glory, the artists also deconstructed or pulled them down with their prophecies, that is, their visions or plans for a new world. This means that the artists were not satisfied merely after creating these magnificent cities. An artist is always creating, because he feels the irrepressible urge to do so. After each creation, the artist moves on to a new one. Art is undoubtedly immortal and lives on in all its glory. But the artist abhors stagnation and begins creating another masterpiece. It is crucial for artists to do this because only then will the world be able to move forward towards a better future. Artists thus have the responsibility of staying in the driver's seat all the time. For each age is a dream that is dying. Time never stands still and artists recognize this. What the common man thinks to be true and permanent is seen only by the artist as fleeting and ephemeral like a dream. Or one that is coming to birth, the world is in perpetual motion. Whatever is created is decaying and at the same time giving shape to newer creations, possibilities and hopes. Artists are the ones who recognize this and work with it.